And then eventually we'll take this not very good compost, because we won't give a lot of attention, there'll be too much dirt in it and whatnot, and we'll add small amounts of it into our other compost piles. Not great compost still can have that water retention qualities, and up to 10% compost in a new pile actually helps the water to moderate really well. It holds water when you don't want water, and gives it up when you, do, when you want it. So we'll make so-so compost here that that will be a great additive to our piles. Okay, so now the green, and I'm gonna, I, could, I could happily have four or five times the green, maybe, maybe six or eight, because it's going to break down, right? The thing is, I know I can make good compost with just the manure, so I don't have to worry about it. But I'd get a lot of green if I could, you know? And if you know the origin of grass clippings, they're fine. Don't overdo them, because they mat and they don't breathe. But a little bit will give you a lot of nitrogen, you know? So if you know your neighbors and you know that they wouldn't begin to spend their money on poison for their lawn, <laughs> then you can use their, their stuff, you know? I mean, there, there's a whole lot of people that are not put, especially in this economy, putting their money into Chemlon. You know? um, they got some other things to use. All right, so we have that, we have that. Um, next thing we'll go for is straw. Oh, actually, you know what? I have one more thing. of. We're only going to have one layer of this juicy stuff. I have a little bit more I'll show you. No, next thing we'll do is hay, and then we'll do straw. Well, actually, take the bag. We'll do straw for the bulking. This is, you know, you get a formula, but as you learn to compost, especially if you're going right into a pause system, then intuition is a whole big, a big part of it, you know? The best way, the best practice here would be more work, but we would make the pile here, and as it started to heat up, we'd turn it one time, mixing it into its permanent place. That turning would give a good mixing. The whole thing about layering and compost descriptions, layering is not the best way to make compost, but it's a great way to get even distribution. That's why they layer, you know? The microbes much prefer, a, they don't all want to be in their own little world, they want to be in a nice, diverse world, just like we do. And so having it all mixed up is better than having those layers. The layers are just about getting the right proportions. This is my little food waste. I mostly eat vegetables, so it wouldn't be very attractive to rats. Okay, now we'll do straw. And then we're gonna do some wet hay. Then we'll do more bulky, you know, then we'll, then we'll do, yeah, we'll do a little more bulky and then we'll go up more manure. Don't want this getting down in here. Pull that back out. No, actually, the, that's a perfect example. The raspberries were keeping it from falling over where I didn't want it to go, you know? So is the straw at Valley Ag herbicide free? Um, you'd have to ask them, they probably don't know, you know? Yeah. You gotta basically trace it back to the producer. You know, um, you can also do. You can take buy some straw if they if somebody you know has is going to have the same source by the time you're done finding out. Mm -hmm. Buy some straw, rot it down, and try and grow beans in it yeah. and tomatoes. And if they die, you know you have herbicides. That's called a bioassay. John, do you want to talk about bioassay? You want to doing that a little bit? Um, bioassay. So basically, turn the way till he turns that on. That's great, Juan. Just stay there. Okay, that's good. Go ahead and get another load and then shut it off. Okay, so now we're going with a very wet hay, right? And actually, I say that and I go, um, I will right now, as a matter of fact, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with wet hay, but I'm thinking that's dense and this is dense, and they're both wet. Put some dry stocky stuff in between. That's the way you do it, you know? And you know what we'll try and do on the blog? We'll try and monitor people. You can go to the website, I'll try to give you a every couple days report on this one. I have no idea if it's going to work. 
<laughs> it usually does. You know? yeah. It usually does, but I'm not usually talking about all kinds of other stuff, and I might not be getting it right. It's all intuitive for me. Yeah. Um, pardon? Do you this want to is where you dry. say dry straw. Do I want to show oh, the fungi. Yeah, if you dry, now it's all white. Oh, okay. Yeah, go over and take a look. white stuff right You're here. You're looking for that aeration. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Fungi can be better at dry. So if, it, if it's real dry, all that's going to be active is a fungi. Um, back at the uh, monitoring the compost environment. Okay. So. The very surface of this got dry. If you go back to your monitoring the compost environment page, um, color white would be a mold or fungus as now the dominant organism on this stuff. They'll break it down, but if they're real slow. So that means that you know you probably got wet enough and then it got too dry, and now they're they're doing it. What we're trying to do is get bacteria to do most of it. They multiply really fast and are the right conditions they break stuff down real fast um, so this is uh, they used to call it actinomyce actinobacteria I believe is the correct uh, name for it these days they've reclassified it but it, it shows you that you know those critters are present and right on the surfaces it's dry so they're showing up and uh, if your product even when it finishes if it gets too dry you'll start to see it turn white like that not a bad thing but it just kind of shows you, and that, that's what that meant there, and that would have a, um, a moldy smell to it, like an old basement, you know, that would be the smell of that one. And uh, it means that you're, you're just too dry. So, um, no bacterial action right there, you're trying to get bacterial action. So the, this, this monitoring stuff becomes real important. Okay, so what I'm doing here, so I'm using this hay, but I'm not just taking books of it that are all matted and dense. I'm trying to fluff it a little, get some air in it, you know. It's going to compact again, but if it's got some air, that allows microbial activity to get going. You know? Once again, this is not a farm technique. <laughs> so Pat, if you're doing you know, it on farm, you got to figure out how to do that with a machine, you know. Um, or you're going to be asking for food stamps. You know? Hey Pat, even though we're not on schedule, remember I looked at the weather and it said storm at noon? Well, yeah. Coming. Uh huh. Yeah, Good. Well, that'll 22. Make speed us up. So okay. We'll be having some rain here in a minute. So, you folks, gonna, you gonna have a cover for this pack? Um, yeah, we'll grab these top picks. All right. This stuff here, I was gathering it up. When I was gathering dried stuff, I made it a point to grab this. This is bed straw, right? And it's got. They used to make mattresses out of it when it dried. It's got some nice green structure. So it's pretty ideal. If you got this weed, it's a pretty ideal weed. It's got nitrogen, but it's gonna have structure in the initial start. Once the pile builds heat, it needs less structure because it's got the chimney effect to give it power to run, you know? So you want to try and get, your, that's why I'm fluffing this now. I know it's going to compact, but I need the structure in the beginning to get it going, and then the chimney effect will make up for the loss of some structure, okay? So I have a little more green. I'm tickled because that's what's really missing in this pile is more green. We just didn't have enough weeds this week, and I didn't have time to harvest them just for the class. Um, so we'll get the green distributed around. And okay, the green, there's another thing that's great about the green. It's not just nitrogen, it's sugars. It's food for microbes. They really love those sugars. You know, it really helps with the diversity and gets them kicking. Um, jumping ahead, I was rereading the compost tea manual. And um, they're now putting fruit, mashed fruit, in the compost tea for diverse sugars to feed mark microbes. So I went to food. Food line, the closest thing I find are organic with uh, mangles, which I happen to know don't get poisoned. And I bought two mangles and masked them up for my, comp my compost tea. Which is a little over the top, but <laughs> it was a class, so what the heck, right? Okay, Juan. And then we'll need more stalks. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll agree that yeah, Thank you. Uh, cut a little piece of cover, cover it in? No, we'll take the cover from over there. From up under there. there. Okay. No, no, we have covers about that size right there. Yeah, up there, by the compost pile, we got it. So rock dust is a mineral additive you could... Great, thanks. <laughs> it's a mineral additive you could put in there, and what it does is it, it's a site for fungal activity. Fungi actually like the rock dust. Uh, it's a mineral, and it actually adds uh, paramagnetic energy, which is 
that goes off to a whole nother world. Yeah, I didn't but, mean to go that deep in <laughs> Well, I, you gave me the look like, <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Okay, so. Just that you can add rock dust, you can get at quarries. Yeah, you can get rock dust at quarries real cheap. The, um, the USDA years ago, uh, there was, there were because I hung around in Beltsville a lot, they had a guy come and uh, he was funded by the EPA to study acid rain damage here. And uh, his solution, what he after all this work he did, at the very end of his project, he found out that rock dust mixed with compost on the pine trees at the high elevations was, was uh, mitigating the acid rain damage. And so the rock dust um, stimulated beneficial fungi activity. We use it in compost tea sometimes for that. It provides really slow release rock powders and uh, you know, it's an amendment you can put in. Just like as this finishes off, say you had a field that needed a lot of calcium. Well, you could put the calcium in the compost as it's finished, and when you apply that to, to the field, you get better use. It's, it's like you got more lime, because more of it will be more available because it was in the compost. You bioactivated a fertilizer. And uh, years ago in California on commercial vegetable production, they showed that you increase nitrogen use efficiency when fertilizers are blended with compost and uh, you know higher yield and, and basically you turn a more soluble nitrogen into a sort of a time release type of thing. So there's all kinds of things that happen once you once you have the compost. And you know a lot of people say, boy, this is an awful lot of trouble to go through, but if you can make some really good concentrate, then you can take the concentrate and do lots of other stuff with it. See I we're, okay. we're going to have to get into worm compost production and worm yeah, casting here, production yeah. real soon here because yeah, we're behind. Uh, we are but, way behind. Okay, but that's pretty key. This is a lot of work. Do it once. If you're a home gardener, do it once a year. Do it in your slow time, you know. Make great compost. Make the time once a year. Elliot Coleman, people know who Elliot Coleman is? He's like a pretty famous grower, right? You know? <laughs> he says he spends like 60% of his time making compost. If you make great, now we're not there. I wouldn't recommend you spend this, but if you make great compost, it makes everything else so much easier. Take the time to ace the pile. Do the hard work. Get it right once a year. That's all you need. Okay. All right. We'll do one more layer of everything, and we'll be out of here. When I was at Hickory Nut Gap Farm, I would I would take in a bedding, and I'd make a 180 foot row of bedding, 10 foot wide and four and a half feet tall, and then every every week I would put um, five or six garbage cans full of food from Food Lion. So I, I took the food, I'd open it up, throw it in there, shut it, open it up. And it's still so dry, the food's stuck. Mm -hmm. There's not enough water. It's just sitting there drying. And I do that. And then when I finally had like 180 foot of a row filled with food, then I start becoming a trucker of manure and mm -hmm. silage. Right. And, I, and I get that all in and then I hit it with the water and then boom, you know, I'm 155 the next day, uh -huh. and now it's going to crank. Uh -huh. So see, I, even though I had food, I was stockpiling, 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 and I said, okay, I'm at the right spot now. And now I hit it with the, with the kicker nitrogen, right. and it all kicks in, and I adjust for moisture, you know, do the, uh, do the cover because it's summertime, you know, hit it with the turner. And now this system is like passive, but, you know, you can get the, you can get the front off of this thing, and you can turn it later. Right. But I'd recommend, you know, waiting till it's broken down pretty good, mm -hmm. you know, because otherwise, you, you know, it's, it's a lot of work turning this stuff. Um, and back to that synergy thing, which is going to segue into the worm casting production, which we should already Going to in a moment. Come One on. more load right now, Wines. We're going to throw some manure on top of this and be done. Okay. Um, I need lots of stocks fast. Oh, what, uh, what Hurry, the, we uh, got to get this pile right in a hurry. <laughs> the storm is coming, matey. <laughs> well, if the time schedule is half, that's yeah, we, we're about an hour behind. I'll explain that synergy in a minute. Right now, you are the synergy. If you put this in a wheelbarrow with a sharp shovel, it's actually go past the top of it. But I don't have a good sharp shovel, so it's kind of really break it up. So close, now we just want to have it spread out more on the edges. Look at that last one there. Wow. Can we have four for a second time? Uh, no, this is good. 
I'm not sure I still got it. Yeah, any straw. I'll take any straw there is. That's hay though. Okay, I'll take that hay. 